wildlife biologists often need to determine the size of an animal population. Sometimes it's because there are signs the population is decreasing or even becoming extinct. Of course, researchers can't count every single animal one by one. Some animals may be too hard to locate or there may just be too many to find and count in the time available. So, scientists use an estimation strategy. One strategy involves catching a sample group of animals and marking or tagging them in some way. These coyotes are being tagged with colored bands to estimate their population in southern Alaska. Half a world away, these researchers use collars to keep track of a lion population on Africa's Serengeti Plain. In each case, one of the goals is to estimate the size of an animal population, how many there are in the area total using a marked sample. From the Serengeti to the big city. We can learn about other things we can estimate here in the United States. In Philadelphia, we can estimate the height of this building. To do that, we just need to know about how tall each section is and how many sections there are from bottom to top. And in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, we can estimate the number of things that's in a large group. In this case, the office buildings on each side of this street. We just need to find out about how many buildings are in each section and how many sections are here. We can estimate the size or amount of something if we know the size of its parts. Let's look at some approaches to estimating amounts and measurements. The rustic town of Ketchikan is located on the Gulf of Alaska in the southeastern part of the state. Ketchikan is known as the totem pole capital of the world because it has the world's largest collection of totem poles. Native Americans carved these timeless monuments to represent their families. We'll use one of the most famous totem poles in Ketchikan, made entirely of cedar, to learn a strategy to estimate height. The sections all appear to be similar heights, and measuring some of them, we can see they're all between two and three feet tall. So how can we estimate the height of this ancient work of art? First, count the number of sections. Two, four, six, eight, ten. There are ten sections. Now, multiply the number of sections by the height of each one. Because the heights of the sections vary, we'll use both lesser and greater heights to get a range for our estimate. 10 times 2 feet is 20 feet. 10 times 3 feet is 30 feet. We estimate that the totem pole is between 20 and 30 feet, or around 25 feet tall. We can estimate the height of something if we know about how tall each section is and how many sections there are. to the Johnson home. The Johnson family wants to go on vacation. They've decided they'll go on a cruise in six months. The cost will be $3,000. The Johnsons don't have the cash to pay for it, but they do have a plan. The whole family will pitch in to raise the money and make this dream a reality. The plan is to have everyone contribute an equal share. $1,000 from Christopher, who will start a part-time job on weekends at the local barbershop. $1,000 from his sister Natasha, who will start a beauty business, doing hair and makeup for her friends. And $1,000 from Dad, an accountant by day. He's going to get his hands dirty on weekends, lending a hand at a nearby salvage yard. Christopher, Natasha, and Mr. Johnson must each estimate how much work it will take to raise a thousand dollars. Now let's look at dad's plan. Charles Johnson is working weekends at this salvage yard, fixing used car parts. He works part-time, 
making $65 a day and works either Saturday or Sunday. That's $65 each weekend. Charles divides $1,000 by $65. The answer, about 15. To make $1,000, Charles Johnson will need to work about 15 days. It'll take quite a bit of work for the Johnson family to reach their $3,000 goal, but the payoff will be well worth it when they're waving bon voyage. We can use estimation to figure out about how much effort it will take to make a certain amount of money and to earn a well-deserved reward. Let's head to the Galapagos Islands off the western coast of South America to learn about one way scientists estimate the size of bird populations. This bird is called an albatross. It is more commonly known as a goony bird because it looks clumsy on land. These wildlife biologists are studying the population of goony birds in the Galapagos Islands. They're using a technique called capture-recapture. Suppose they caught a sample group of 200 birds. This represents a fraction of the goonie bird population, but we don't know yet what fraction. Let's see how we can get a clue. First, they attach tiny metal bands to the bird's legs. Next, they'll release the birds to mix back into the larger population. Later, the biologists return to catch another sample of goonie birds. Suppose that this time they catch 360 and count how many have leg bands from the first capture. These are the ones they've recaptured. Suppose three out of the 360 have leg bands. Three out of 360, written as a fraction, is the same as one out of 120. So we can estimate that the first time around, they have captured about one 120 of the entire the Goonie Bird Excuse population. Excuse interruption, Mr. Travis, please Remember, come to the office. that first batch Thank you. was 200. If 200 birds represent 1 120th of the entire population, then 200 times 120, or 24,000, would be the whole goonie bird population. In this way, we can estimate that about 24,000 goonie birds live in this region. We can estimate how big a population is if we know something about the sizes of its parts.